17 strikeouts, 11 walks. Megan, the keys for her today. Well, she just got to pick up where she left off, Tyler. She had an incredible start against Texas State in the midweek game, and this was coming off of that tough trip to Norman, Oklahoma, and Coach White said, hey, I really feel like Courtney Day is finally back to being completely healthy. She had a little bit of an injury in the fall, and this is a, an athlete that I think Texas has been waiting to get back. So last Wednesday, she goes out. She gets her first complete game win of the season. She gets a season-high seven strikeouts, and what was so good, Tyler, was just the fact that she was able to locate that curve uh, on both sides of the plate, a great change, and she was moving that ball up in the zone with the rise ball. Career high seven strikeouts as well, so not only on the season for Day. Count three and one to Jackson. Jackson 376 on the year, a 438 on base percentage, that the 11th walk of the season for Jackson. Yeah, and you go back to last week, that's again what made Courtney Day so good. She didn't allow any walks. So right away, you know, and it's just the first batter, but uh, do you just want to pay attention there? Because that was kind of the Achilles heel of yesterday's game too, right? So many free passes. We see Omni laying down a bunt. And it was Brecant too, manning that third base position. We saw Alyssa Washington over there yesterday, but out due to an ankle issue. We saw her in a boot walking around prior to the game. Defensively, the remainder for Texas on the infield left to right. Cantu Parker, Jefferson Sullivan over at first. J.J. Smith behind home as Morgan Wynn, the junior from Pittsburgh, California, steps in, get to the outfield in a moment. Outfield for Texas, Lauren Burke, Shannon Rhodes, and Whitaker in right field. Pretty crazy three games in a row. Jackson gets the lead off. She gets on sack bun. I feel like we're watching Groundhog's Day a little bit. It has been very good at setting the table for Kansas. Mm -hmm. Where Kansas has struggled is with runners on and with runners in scoring position. Saw it multiple instances yesterday where they had the bases loaded and just could not capitalize. Yeah, I think for Kansas, again, that's what you hold on to, right? You kind of take the wins that you were able to get the runners on. You were able to be patient, uh, you know, and take the walks when there was, but again, just not able to pick up that timely hitting, which they can do. I think it, 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 it's just about pulling the trigger on the right pitch. Wins their big bat, 15 home runs. She had reached in all seven plate appearances yesterday and on with a base hit. Jayhawks in business with runners on the corners, one down. Yeah, I think for Morgan Wynn, finally Texas throwing to her. They've put her on a lot all over the weekend. This ball down in the zone, but does a great job barreling it up. Keeps her hands inside it and keeps it fair. It's a great piece of hitting. Bring up the sophomore, Ashlyn Anderson. Two games yesterday, 8-1 in game number one, 10-1 game number two, both victories for the Longhorns. Sophomore Anderson, 292 hitter on the year. 31 hits, five of those doubles, eight home runs, 23 runs batted in. It's 250 on the year with runners in scoring position. 269 with runners on, one two pitch, off speed, undercuts. Parker Schaller, shallow center, excuse me. Not enough for the runner to try to tag up, two down. Good out for Day in Texas. 
Yeah, that's a great job and a great time to use that changeup. I love when you're seeing pitchers use that right from the get-go in the first inning. There's no reason to hold on to that anymore, not with the type of hitters that there are out there. You want all these batters to know that you have that changeup and you're gonna throw it at any count. Texas product from Farmers Brant, Madison Hirsch. Takes strike one. Danny Bowman behind home, Keith Kearney at first, Dustin Douglas at third, the umpire crew for the day. Hirsch, 235 on the year. 15 runs batted in, four home runs. Stockton, Kansas, three for 19 with runners in scoring position across the two games played thus far. when talking with Coach McFalls coming into this weekend, she knew a few things about Texas, that they needed to stay swinging at strikes. They needed to consistently put the ball in play. They knew they needed to make Texas play defense a little bit, right? It's no secret, Texas, you know, struggling a little bit on defense, quite a bit of errors on the season already. And so I have to imagine when you go back and you look at that only three for 19, Runners in scoring position, just too many fly balls yesterday, right? Not enough balls on the ground, not enough times. Just really making Texas work. On the flip side, we did see Texas shore it up. They made a couple good plays at home to get out of innings as well. Um, but that's just something I'd have to imagine they talked about after that doubleheader yesterday. How are we gonna continue? We're getting the runners on like we've mentioned, but how do we make sure to get that timely hitting? Yeah, consecutive innings in game number two where base is loaded, but outs at home. And once again, Kansas gets a couple on, but Day gets out of it with a strikeout. Texas takes their first cuts when we come back. Third season as well for Texas head coach Mike White. 797 career win percentage, fourth amongst active D1 coaches. Coming over from all that great success at Oregon, taking Texas back to a super regional. Longhorns looking to make another deep run. Highlight in the lineup today, Megan, you like Lauren Burke. Yeah, she had a four RBI day yesterday and that's why they're gonna move her up into the three spot yesterday down in the five. And I just feel like this is an, another batter Texas has really been relying on heavily to kind of work through uh, just getting more consistent. I feel like yesterday she did a great job coming up with runners on. Janae Jefferson, as we saw yesterday for the Texas batters, aggressive. On the pitch from Casey Hamilton, a freshman lefty for the Jayhawks from Topeka, Kansas. Five and seven, one loss, record eight start of the season, 4.24 ERA, opponents hitting 295 against Hamilton. No surprise here that we're seeing Hamilton as she only went two innings in game one. They took her out in the third inning. She did give up the five earned runs, but you know what, I think that's why you're gonna see her go back out there. This is a, a pitcher who earlier this week got the W against Wichita, a ranked Wichita, number 23. And in those seven innings, nine strikeouts, so she definitely has it. I just felt like for her, Hamilton just wasn't getting the call. She was just missing a little bit. What to expect from her, 64, 66 miles an hour. She keeps the ball down. She moves that curveball, both sides of the plate really well and an excellent change. Rhodes moving that ball out into center field. It'll bounce off the top of the wall. About as close as you can get to leaving the yard without doing such. <laughs> I think that smirk says it all. She you knows she almost had one there, but still a nice piece of hitting and a double for Rhodes. Any other ballpark that's out of here, Texas with those 10 foot fences, it feels like it's a green monster out there at times. She absolutely crushed that one. You could try to do that how many times, Megan, and not replicate it? Get yeah. the ball to check up <laughs> off the top of the wall like that. I feel like I'm seeing it a little bit more often lately. <laughs> that Janae Jefferson home run in Norman, that was an interesting one. Sixth double of the season, second of the series for Rhodes, who continues to just be a driving force for this Texas offensive lineup. 
And as mentioned, Lauren Burke moved up. See if she can bring Rhodes home. Texas squad that averages coming into this series 7.35 runs per game. So they've bested that in both games thus far. Good enough for ninth in the NCAA. 370 batting average, third amongst all teams. 627 slug, third as well. They get on base, the second most out of any team in the country. Thirty-four wins to just six losses. Three of those coming the hands of Oklahoma as Burke waits on that pitch. Should be enough for Rhodes to get home. Played the first run of the ball game. That's why they moved her up yesterday. Again, stepping up with runners in scoring position. Today, same thing. This time on a changeup. That changeup that's up in the zone. You see her kind of reset and able to keep her hands through this ball, great piece of hitting. Yeah, Burke prior to that, 317, that her 34th hit on the year, but always feels like such a solid batter. Never gets short changed at the plate, for sure. You can back her up with Mary Iacopo. Junior from Carson, California. Just over 400 on the year at 408. 40 hits, 12 of those home runs. Has been relatively quiet by her standards in the two games yesterday. That was a big cut right there. Yeah, she was going yard, at least in her head, huh? <laughs> that was a hack, and you love to see it. I mean, that's how you swing when you got 12 home runs for sure. I think what's interesting is to see moving forward uh, how Texas plays the DP and the catcher role. We've seen J.J. Smith get the start behind the dish all three games this weekend. Iacopo has been back there. I think they're kind of giving her a little bit of a break. Just getting to be the DP. J.J. Smith, though, just kind of slid right in. I don't feel like you've seen a whole lot of change or that the momentum has shifted and I find it so interesting too Texas has four starting catchers they can intermix if they need to it's ball on the ground third baseman Anderson will take it and a nice throw ranging to her left to get Iacopo over at first or advances to second two down <laughs> Sophomore Colleen Sullivan. 28 runs batted in across her 381 average on the year. Texas good across the series 455 with runners in scoring position. That'll go lower as Harper makes the grab for out number three, but Rhodes nearly leaves the yard, but gets brought home by Burke. One nothing, it stands. Longhorn Network Softball is brought to you by American Campus Communities, where students love living. 360 Bridge, just out on the west side of things here in the capital city of Austin, Texas. Getting warm enough to get the boats out. I was gonna say, this is a nice boat day. Yeah, it felt warmer than 75 degrees this morning when I was leaving the house. Yeah, no clouds in the sky, it's beautiful. Sitting out watching BP earlier, I was like, oh man, I need to find shade. Working on your tan. <laughs> it's trying. Cheyenne Hornbuckle, the junior from Bakersfield, California, will start things off. Six-hole hitter for Kansas in the second inning. Back up the middle, bounces through a trio of Texas defenders. So just a well-placed ball. 
as Kansas has another leadoff batter on. Yeah, if you're Kansas, just keep holding on to that. This is a nice job. This ball's on the outside part of the plate. Not trying to pull it, drives it right back up the middle. Won't be surprised if we see another sack bunt situation. Just, you know, at this point, I think Kansas needs to work on manufacturing a couple runs right now. Moving runners 60 feet. Shelby Gayer goes up the left field line, so no bunt there. Just bloop a single in to put two on to start. Yeah, forget what I said. <laughs> This is going to be, again, a great opportunity for Kansas now. You've got the speedsters at the bottom of the lineup. We're going to try to turn it over to get to that Brittany Jackson. Taryn Trevisio. Flashes that bunt as Cantu was nearly close enough to touch the bat. Senior hitting 212. Kansas's lack of run scoring has not been due to lack of opportunity. They have given themselves plenty of chances, just unable to break through and capitalize. That ball getting over the head of Smith. Both runners will advance on the wild pitch. Yeah, you see Courtney Day trying to go up with that rise ball. Not trying. She sure went up with that rise ball, trying to pop the batter up. You want to throw. If you know it's a sack bunt situation, you're always trying to spin that ball up in hopes to pop her up. But you're talking about Kansas. And Sure, they had a couple strikeouts yesterday. I, I just trying to think about, you know, their offense and what it is that they needed to do. Only two strikeouts in game two yesterday, so they're, they're being picky. It's a good pitch by Courtney Day right there, speaking of being picky. You know, they're not really swinging out of the zone, so to speak, Tyler. So as you keep mentioning, they had the opportunities. It's just trying to now find, I guess, a little bit of luck, right? They're putting ball, bat on ball. Yeah, their leadoff hitters have reached nine of 14 times. Just a lot of ground balls in the infield. Or fly balls, not deep enough to do the damage. And here another bases loaded opportunity. You see Coach White come out and have a conversation with his battery here. This is more of a conversation about, okay, what are you feeling? You know, and I mean, he's not really talking to J.J. Smith, but I think he also wants to make sure right now, hey, this is a time to grind. You got to go right out at, right at these batters. This is the bottom half, and you can kind of see him. He's a little frustrated right now, and I don't blame him. Right. After what we saw her do on Wednesday, she's fully capable of getting herself out of this situation. Kansas yesterday with the bases loaded, 0 for 6. But what you were talking about, Hornbuckle, she's bounced one that was positioned well. Gayer, same thing, but then the walk against Trevisio. So it's not as if Day's been getting hit hard across this inning thus far, but Harper trying to change that. Haley back our way. Getting closer, Tyler. Too close. Need to grab a glove off the wall. From Manhattan, Kansas. 158 on the year has nine hits, five runs batted in as Smith will call for time, try to get on the same page. Parker will trot down from short as well. Yeah, you know what I think this has to do with the signs right now. J.J. Smith, they're not just taking it off the wrist. J.J. Smith's giving the signs. I'm almost certain I saw the runner at second giveaway location. So happy to see they made that adjustment right away. Only one pitch was thrown. Yeah. 
So can Kansas break through, get the big hit? Count one and one. where Texas defensively, whether it be the pitchers or the awareness, were able to bail themselves out repeatedly yesterday. Couple force outs at home, couple strikeouts. Smith wanted that one. Ball in play. Parker will make the grab. One down. It's a good job by Courtney Day. After walking bases loaded, going right at Harper there in the nine hole, and that's exactly what you got to do. You have nowhere to put her. You're down at the bottom half of the lineup. Also knowing Haley Harper hasn't been in the lineup all year long, right? This is, again, as a reminder, she came in starting shortstop after Ramsey went down. First Texas Tech last weekend. Ramsey the starting shortstop. So can Jackson be the one? Opens up the scoring for Kansas. where you want to be if you're Kansas. I feel like the way Brittany Jackson's been swinging it this weekend, exactly who you want up. It's a hard hit. Out to left, it'll be deep enough. Though it's cut off and that will be enough to plate the first run. Hornbuckle coming in off the sack fly from Jackson. That's a great job by Jackson. She gets the ball up in the zone, able to get it deep enough to get that RBI. That's the base. That's just textbook softball, right? Once you get your runners in scoring position, that's the pitch you're looking for. Deep enough that there's not even a need for a play at the plate. Let me see Omni now the batter, but you had mentioned Sidney Ramsey. She was second on the team with 12 multiple hit games, eight multi-RBI games, which was second on the team as well. And the bigger bat, so missing her is Burke going back to the wall. This will be a chance for multiple runs being waved home is Trevisio. The throw too high, so there is the big hit for Kansas. That is what Kansas has been waiting for. Macy Omley steps up big time. Again, this ball elevated just enough that she's able to get this into deep left field. You see the release point that looks like a screw or a rise away. And Omley again, just a great job. Lauren Burke, love the fact that she was able to take that ball right off the wall with her bare hand. Unfortunately, McKenzie Parker airmailed it home. No play at home. Yes, so two runs batted in. With the double for Omni in the air to Parker, Kansas in business. And I think this is something we were more so anticipating coming into yesterday's contest, just knowing that Kansas has had some really big wins throughout their season. They've beat a ranked Missouri, a ranked Oklahoma State, giving Oklahoma their only loss in Big 12 play. And then that ranked Wichita State as well. So they have the capability of putting runs up. Yeah, that lone loss for Oklahoma State, a 7-4 victory for Kansas. It's the first lead for the Jayhawks going back to one nothing in the first inning of game number one yesterday. So 
seeking their first win against Texas since April 30th of 2016. That back when Coach McFalls was in the burnt orange. It was fun yesterday just to see with McFalls here. You know, Connie Clark came on out and she had her Texas on her heart, she said, but you know, sporting that Jayhawks hat because it's a big deal, right? You, when you get to see not only just your friends, but people get elevated to that head coaching role. You want to see them and you want to support them. There were a lot of uh, former Texas players that were in the stands as well. There was a nice tailgate with Caitlin Slack being back and they honored her uh, and Reagan Hathaway yesterday uh, for a senior day they didn't get, but it's really nice that everyone was able to kind of come together for that. Yeah, and they also made it a point to let us know they were having a good time and yeah. we were on the clock. <laughs> Walk to win. So a long inning right now for Day in the circle and Texas defensively. Two down but two on. 25th pitch of the inning coming. Anderson popped out to short in her first at bat. Kansas squad seeking to go back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. A nice grab by Smith back there. And I think right now you're watching a Courtney Day just kind of trying to battle through just some location issues. I think it's, just, it's a release point thing. I like the fact that Coach White's leaving her out here because you've got to work through this, right? Not every day you're going to go out and feeling your best. You're not going to always, you know, just hit every location. But at some point, you've got to dig pretty deep and figure out a way to get out of these situations. Especially because we go back to Wednesday night versus Texas State, right? We saw her being very efficient. She had great command of the strike zone of all her pitches today struggling just a little bit. Saw Shannon Rhodes coming in. And communication from center field. This Kansas squad currently 46th in RPI prior to this weekend. Figure this series alone, but a win would definitely help bump that up. Try to solidify their case to make the Big 12 tournament but also a potential postseason resume past that. Yeah, and as a reminder, that Big 12 tournament, only six of the seven teams make it in right now. They're looking good. They're ranked fifth in the pack, or in the Big 12. They go to Baylor next week, and then uh, after that, they finish out Big 12 with Iowa State. Iowa State right now sitting in last place. In the midst of a two-week away stretch, the Jayhawks, they will stay in Central Texas. Head up the road to Waco. Play a three-game set there. Starting on Friday. And close out the regular season with three against Iowa State. Weekly on the ground to Cantu at third. We'll make the throw for out number three, but Kansas finally breaks through. Megan, they get the big hit they've needed all weekend. Yeah, Macy Onley steps up to the plate. Base is loaded, gets the ball up and out and drives it off the left field wall. Everything Kansas needs to take the lead three to one. One quarterback can reshape the narrative. One quarterback class can reshape the league. NFL Draft begins Thursday on ESPN and ABC. Round one, the 2021 NFL Draft. They are in Cleveland here on ESPN. Well, some history yesterday. You see, Rob Gronkowski was back at his alma mater 
to set a Guinness World Record with a 600-foot catch. This ball may be hit 600 feet. Wow! First pitch. Mackenzie Parker leaves the yard, not quite 600 feet, but maybe about 230. And a new dog toy. Mackenzie Parker, I love to see it. First pitch out of Hamilton's hand. First pitch she sees of the game right on time. <laughs> and a good doggo gets a new treat. <laughs> yes, they do. I love this right here. That ball's not a bad pitch. It's a little up in the zone, but Parker opens up. She stays on the plate. She anticipated it coming inside. She opened her hips, and I mean, she cleared them. So the first pitch she sees of the ball game Leaves the yard, <laughs> sixth home run. Dog was out there practicing earlier prior to the game. Yeah, I do. You see him get those uh, tosses in. What, what would we call that? <laughs> Playing fetch. Soft toss. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a cat lady. <laughs> uh, Royce. Royce isn't playing fetch just yet. Do you leave the TV on at home for him? <laughs> I have. <laughs> But you sent me something about a, do a cat actually jumping at the TV. It scared me, so I thought, better not. I have plenty of birds in the backyard to keep them distracted. Always good action out in right field. What a response, though. I think we've, we've watched this Texas team sometimes, and it's who's going to instigate that energy? Mm -hmm. And you come off an inning like that where obviously you give up three runs. That's what Kansas has done. How quickly can you try to wrestle some of that momentum back into your dugout and Parker does that quickly first pitch sixth home run of the year I didn't even get to talk about my man Gronkowski <laughs> catching the ball out of the helicopter well and great for Parker too right she comes into the day batting 403 so definitely seeing the ball well this season but I feel like going from Norman moving through uh, till today Hasn't been able to come up with some big timely hitting that right away though. That'll make you feel a lot better. <laughs> Player that has power to leave the yard as well, Jordan Whitaker, the freshman. He's done so three times on the season for 19 hits, 373 average. keep thinking about that Gronkowski catch and I can't, I know you and I are talking about it, but 600 plus feet, I just can't imagine how hard that comes down. And I know you said the velocity is not gonna continue, but it's still, I can't feel good when you're catching it <laughs> in your forearms. So if you're not aware, <laughs> the Guinness Book of World Records completion for Rob Gronkowski dropping a football from a helicopter covering 600 feet in the air. But yeah, I, it's been a while since I've, I've taken physics, but I think you have gravity, you have the mass of the football. It's not going to hit any harder the further it drops down, but I could be completely wrong. We'll leave that open to Twitter. Maybe they can get at you and give us an answer. <laughs> They're feisty on Twitter these days. I don't know. Whitaker earns a walk. Do you think that the ball came down harder than what, uh, like a quarterback throws it? That depends. Obviously, all quarterbacks throw harder, but. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we would have to calculate <laughs> miles per hour. Now you're gonna really make, Kurt, how, how good your physics? Talking to my stat man here. We have to do some physics calculations. With Tyler, math with Megan. <laughs> Free fall and air resistance. You ready? I'm ready. This one in foul territory. All objects free fall at the same rate regardless of their mass. Because of the gravitational field at Earth's surface, causing a 9.8 meters per second acceleration. Any object placed there, we call this ratio the acceleration of gravity. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is our answer. 
Mouth I don't know. Megan. Do you think Tom Brady throws harder? I bet. I see him whip that ball around, and I don't even know how people catch that. So 600 feet, I have to imagine, it's dropping pretty fast. Yeah, I think it'd be more like fielding a punt. You just got to make sure you get under it. But hey, maybe we can line it up next spring game. <laughs> nope. You can be fielding punts. Hey, I know I was just knocking Twitter, but I just got some insight. The dog that we keep showing, it was Mackenzie Parker's own dog that got her home run dog uh, ball. Wow. Yep, Carrie O'Leary just tweeted me that. We have a name? Bo. Bo. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Bo out taking the game in and getting a new toy. Texas getting a run to make it a one-run contest. 2-2, two, two. the pitch is fouled off. That one may test our theory on gravity on a car back there, hopefully not. 232 feet on the home run. What, what was my guess? 600. 230. Oh. <laughs> 600 was Gronk. <laughs> Texas with three hits on the board. Two runs, one air. Kansas, four hits, three runs. It's Casey Hamilton still in the circle. Inside, chopped foul. Pitching to her counterpart in day. Still first time through the order for Texas, 333 on the year for day. It's her 49th at bat, she has 16 hits. One double, one triple, two home runs, and 10 runs batted in. And she has quite the battle going now with Hamilton. Like this is where we saw Texas really start to capitalize yesterday where these long at bats, specifically I remember Jordan Whitaker's 14 pitch at bat. Just a nice job fighting anything off close until they can get one they can handle. And the long battle goes in favor of Day, who laces one in, will allow Parker, excuse me, Whitaker, the pinch runner for her spot to advance. It was Williams that had snuck in. Well, we were debating physics, but Bailey Williams gets around and plates the run to make it a 3-3 contest after the single in the air. Yeah, after this long battle, this ball inside, and I love the fact that Day able to stay inside of it. And you see, because Williams was on the move, second baseman Hornbuckle breaking towards second, no one's there to, to field what could have been potentially an easy ground ball to second. So first air of the ball game for Kansas. Ties it up, leaves Day in scoring position for J.J. Smith, freshman catcher from Rosenberg, Texas. Lots of backspin on this one. It was Hamilton calling for it. The ball glancing off of her glove. Yeah, right here, I, Hamilton calls it earlier. I like that. You do not want to leave that to your catcher, especially if your pitcher is going to call it. I think, if anything, maybe the third baseman, Ashlyn Anderson, wants to come in. But unfortunately for Casey Hamilton, that's a catch that she makes. And unfortunately for Kansas, it's the airs this weekend that just keep coming back to get them. So two airs back-to-back -back plays. What could have prevented a run and then also secured a out. Texas will have two in scoring position. A couple of arms up in the bullpen for Kansas. Tatum Goff, Savannah De Roche. We saw both of them yesterday.
That hitting 61 to Jefferson. And I say that, Megan, because I was doing a little research. Patrick Mahomes clocked the radar, gone 60 miles an hour at the 2017 NFL Combine at the time, <laughs> tied a Combine record. So just to give you a frame of reference in terms of how fast a football can be thrown. Yeah, you're not using a glove to catch it. So you just have to absorb all of that. Well, you got receiver's gloves, so a little bit, but not as much leather. Not like a catcher's glove. Definitely not. <laughs> I'd rather try to catch a football from Mahomes than a pitch from, say, Cat Osterman. Even with all the gear on. Yeah. <laughs> Strike across from Hamilton to Jefferson. Ground out to her position, second in her first at bat. Twelfth walk of the season for Janae Jefferson. And if you're Texas, the player that you want coming up with the bases loaded. Shannon Rhodes already glanced one off the top of the wall. Had a nice smile in what she thought could have been a home run, but Texas. Their best hitter, four for seven on the season with the bases loaded at the plate. I feel like even just watching the way Shannon Rhodes takes her pitches, she is just so locked in. Well, she's taking this one out to center, but not quite as deep as the few that we've seen this Weekend, but good enough for a positive result as Day tags up to score the run and break the tie. And add that to Shannon Rhodes' RBI list. That's her sixth of the weekend. 49th of the season. First out of the inning. But runners on the corners for Burke had an RBI single, her first at bat. Almost needed my glove there. <laughs> Jefferson going for second. Hornbuckle cuts it off and wisely checks over at third. Yep, just your classic first and third. Not wanting Texas to get any more runs. They choose to have your second baseman come across, cut it off. That's a wise decision right now. One, two to Burke. This one out to right field. That'll bounce into the wall and get stuck. So trying to pull it out of the wedge. Trevisio does, but both runs scoring for Texas and Smith and Jefferson, Texas now with five in the frame. Lauren Burke once again, runners in scoring position. This ball up in the zone. She's able to tack on two more RBIs for her RBI count of the weekend. Just stepping up big time. And again, that's why you saw Coach White go with the move to put her up in the three hole. Lauren Burke rewarding coach as coach put his faith in the staff and moving her up in the hitting lineup. Seventh run batted in of the series. Looks like we'll have a pitching change coming for Kansas, Texas. Already with five here in the second inning. Just one down with one on. Haley Reed. 
Kansas had their best offensive output, scoring three in the top of the second, but Mackenzie Parker steps up, first pitch, and leaves one for her pop. Bo gets the souvenir. What a good boy, Bo. Getting your mom's home run ball. I guess you get to determine, do you chew it up? Try to keep it as a keepsake. So Texas has played it five. Also benefited from a couple of airs from Kansas here in the second inning. It's the new pitcher Haley Reed will throw to Mary Iacopo. Iacopo out into center field, but the speedy Jackson more than enough time to come in and grab it. And that's what Reed needs to do, right? You need to make a change of momentum. They go with Reed, the senior. She's a righty, a different look. You're just, again, looking to try to change something up in the way that Texas has been hitting and getting runners on. Reed's gonna throw just a little bit slower. She tops out around 63 miles an hour. As you see right there, she's got a great curve, nice late break. She's gonna throw that both sides of the plate as well and mix in that change. I think that's gonna be key as well. You've gotta use that change early and often. Count 0 2 in her favor. Sullivan looking, Reed gets that inside corner, but Texas does the damage. Five runs in the second to make it a 6-3 ball game here in Austin. 6-3 ball game here at Red and Charlene McCombs Field, Austin, Texas, number 12, Texas Longhorns, 34 and six on the year. Hopping back into the advantage after scoring five runs in the second, Kansas, there are three coming in the second as well. Look at the difference between the first 13 innings of the series to that second inning. Kansas finally getting that big breakthrough hit, but Texas responding immediately. Yeah, I think for Kansas, that's what you have to hold on to, right? You got to just keep applying that pressure. Courtney Day staying out in the game, and I feel like they've been doing a nice job against Courtney Day. First pitch swung on by Hirsch out to Lauren Burke, who makes the grab for out number one. And even that right there, that's a nice swing, right? You just barrel it up, you just miss it, goes deep left field. So you're watching a Kansas team attacking the right pitches. What's the key now for Day as Hornbuckle steps in, coming off of that inning in the second, but now pitching back with the lead. You know, I think for any pitcher out there, you know, it goes pitcher to pitcher, but you gotta keep yourself warm. You gotta keep yourself in these really, really long innings. Make sure that you're ready to continue to go back out there. But now again, your team went back and got you a three run lead. You gotta attack that strike zone. Go right at these batters. Well, she's gotten a couple of quick outs as Sullivan will do it herself, tap the bag, two up, two down. And part of that is getting ahead of batter so you can utilize that changeup like she just did. Shelby Gayer, the catcher, one for one on the day. That's where it started for Kansas. Hornbuckle, the single, Gayer, the single, the walk to Trevisio. Six, seven, eight. All scored in that second inning. Right away, you're noticing that changeup came to play here in the third inning. She 
she's gotten that control of it. She's able to keep it down. Nice late break. Bailey Williams staying in the game for Texas in the spot of Jordan Whitaker in right field. Came in as that pinch runner and eventually came around and scored. Ready to go at one, two, off speed. Gets her looking, so a quick inning. Great bounce back for Texas and a six, seven, eight. Two up for the Horns. A lot of great athletes, a lot of confidence. One of the most dominant forces in college softball. Left and back and it's gone. Bates hit from the ground. The UCLA Bruins, some of the best hitters in the country. And another highlight grab. Huge matchup coming up next. Washington, UCLA, they are tied one to one in the season, in the series. Winner takes over first place in the Pac-12. Take a look at that, Gabby Plain with her first loss of the season. And I just think right now you're watching a UCLA team that they're gonna try to hold on to them, but that Rachel Garcia, did you see that minuscule ERA, Tyler? <laughs> and then, oh, no big deal. She's hitting over 400 too. <laughs> Two time player of the year, Rachel Garcia. Three o'clock central on ESPN2. Check out that matchup in the Pac-12. Here in Austin, Tyler Denning, Megan Willis. Final game of the series between Kansas and Texas. Longhorns going for the sweep. Kansas trying to notch a victory. For Texas, it would be their ninth victory in Big 12 play, 35th on the season. For Kansas, their third conference victory, 23rd on the year. As Parker quickly grounded out. So after the big home run, Bo's got to wait a little bit, at least to the next at bat. To in front. How about, how about Haley Reed right now coming into this game, getting all three batters out right away. I feel like what we see different with her today is just the location, right? Yesterday, she started game two. She wasn't able to get out of the second inning. And again, she throws that curveball both sides of the plate, just not able to really get the location that she wanted. So far today, feeling like she has a little bit more snap behind it. She's able to catch Texas right-handed hitters. Looking, Colleen Sullivan looking on that backdoor curve. Just goes to show me that that has nice late break right now. So Jordan Whitaker back in her hitting position. Seven hole in the lineup for Texas. Walked in her first at bat. We'll earn another. It's a tough one to lay off. That's that changeup. Well, next weekend, the next series for the Texas Longhorns, live here on Longhorn Network. Friday, 4.30, Saturday, noon, Sunday, noon. Should be a great one. Oklahoma State, top 10 in town, Texas. Looking to protect their home field. Both of those teams chasing Oklahoma. Break that matchup down for me, Megan. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to more of a pitcher's battle, right? You've got Carrie Eberly there that leads the Big 12 in ERA. 
and you know you got the timely hitting. I think what you're seeing though is an Oklahoma State that hasn't had to face Oklahoma or Texas. So they have, I, I mean, they're a great team, don't get me wrong, but they haven't been completely tested with that Big 12 schedule. Won 11 straight Big 12 games, 6.5 runs per game. And you mentioned the good pitching, Everly 0.81 ERA. The USA Softball Player of the Year top 25 finalist, along with Janae Jefferson as well. Mm -hmm. And earlier this week, so should be a good one. 4.30 on Friday, noon on Saturday, noon on Sunday. Watch them all here on Longhorn Network. Yeah, and again, that .81 ERA, incredible. But again, has not faced the number one and number three offensive teams in the nation, not just the pack of Big 12. Day popping up to Hornbuckle for out number two. Should be a classic battle between great hitting, great pitching. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help Texas just getting more competition, right? That RPI we talk about a little bit. I don't think it's going to play as big of a role this year for postseason. However, going to be nice for Texas to get another ranked opponent in here. Yeah, Texas currently 16th in RPI. Oklahoma State 9th. RPI, obviously, the metric. Well, if you're not familiar with it, one of the things that the committee can look at and utilizes when determining Postseason seating, who will host regionals, super regionals, where those seatings will be when the tournament is announced. Still though, some work to do for both of these teams to try to enhance that resume for Texas after Oklahoma State on May 7th, a date against Baylor here in Austin, and then go for two in Waco as the two schools usually do, rotate the 2-1. Big 12 tournament, May 14th through 15th in Oklahoma City. And then NCAA Regionals on May 21st. Women's College World Series after the Super Regional round starting June 3rd, going through the 9th. As always in OKC as well. J.J. Smith looks at the strike. Reed gets her looking. 6-3, things stand here in Austin. Big day in the softball world tomorrow. Tomorrow, they are announcing the 20 predetermined sites for regionals. 16 predetermined sites. They are going to, you had to make a bid, though. I just want to make it. A note there, schools had to place a bid to see if they could even host. Take a look there, eight super regional location based on those 16 predetermined regional sites. And then again, the selection show May 16th on ESPN2. That's right after all of the conference tournaments. So a big deal, just the predetermining having a lot to do uh, with COVID and making sure that these locations uh, they can keep nice and clean and ready. They're giving teams an idea of knowing where they're going and also facilities and mm -hmm. the people that are so good at supporting these teams when they come in. Yes. Stravisio gets on to start things off in the fourth with a single. So be on the lookout for all of that information tomorrow. Yeah, and I think some people, you know, of course, you're going to have some of the naysayers, but this is what you have to do. But what's going to be very interesting. The bunt laid down advances the runner, Travisio Harper, out over at first. Is if any of these schools that host maybe aren't the top seed, right? And if they get upset, will they still be a super regional host? And that's going to be... What will be, uh, That's I don't when know, you get some hear. popcorn out and watch yeah. how that unfolds and how people will handle that because I can't imagine there's a lot of schools out there that want to host. Hop on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Jackson back at the top of the order. Just trying to do the best in the environment currently living in to ensure competition continues. 
and that a champion can be crowned. Yeah, because let's say you come in there, you upset, upset even a ranked opponent, right? Normally, you would then go to that school who comes out of the regionals home site, but you might as well keep one of the 16 sites that have been uh, neutralized and sterilized and ready to happen just, you know, just a few days later. So it definitely makes sense. Grab in the corner. Push the count to full 65 pitches. Thus far for her. Jackson the walk and a sack fly that brought home a run back in the second. RPI, this is what it looks like UCLA, Florida, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida State. LSU, Oregon, Oklahoma, Washington, and Arizona State. Mentioned Texas coming in that top 20. And I think the big one you take look there, right? Oklahoma down at eight, even though they've been pretty much number one all season long, only one loss on the season. And a lot of that having to do with the competition that they uh, had to play. And a lot of things changed up early in the season not just with COVID, but the winter storms. And so I feel like that first two weeks, especially for the Southern uh, schools or anyone that was planning to play in Texas, really had to jumble their schedule up. And that's again, why you only see Oklahoma at eight. Yeah, you wanna do some math with Megan? Let's do some no. RPI calculations. No. <laughs> <laughs> Always so fun. But usually when we start talking RPI, the bigger indicator is that we're starting to set our sights, at least here as broadcasters, towards postseason and what things may look like. Start to shape up what teams will make it from which conferences. We see Riley White come into the circle. We saw her yesterday. Scary moment. There were two on and two out in the top of the fifth inning. It was Ashlyn Anderson that had Hit the ball right back to her, and we talked about this yesterday. I think she just got that adrenaline boost. You see just the reaction. It's like a switch head flip makes the play. I mean, that was incredible. And then so was her performance. But like the way that she was able to come in after Molly Jacobson, just really commanding the strike zone. She had three strikeouts on the day, but for me, it was about the strike zone command and that she was able to make that ball dance. I really liked the way her rise ball was jumping and uh, she was getting lots of swing and misses. So scoreless over four and two thirds, struck out three, walked three, allowed just one hit. But most importantly was good after that contact with the ball. Courtney Day, she'll sit down after three and a third, responsible for the runners on first and second right now. But two strikeouts, four walks, three earned runs. How was the performance by Day? You know, just not as sharp as we've seen her, and especially not after Wednesday against Texas uh, State. I just don't think that she was able to get a good feel for it today, and that's why you're going to see them go ahead and make that change. So two on in Trevisio and Jackson for Macy Omley had the big breakthrough double. 
back in the second inning. Yeah, this is who you want up if you're Kansas. You got a couple runners on. Again, runner in scoring position. You have someone who is able to drive it deep left field. Game still in reach, just three runs. T uh, Kansas looking just to tack on a couple more. Yeah, time run at the plate. One swing could do it. And you you know that's exactly what Coach McFalls is playing for, right? She did. She had uh, Haley Harper in the nine hole sacrifice bunt to get Trevizio into scoring position. Side block by Smith. Runners will both advance. Unfortunately, JJ Smith not able to come up with that. That was a tough one. I'd have to imagine that's a wild pitch. Moving you away. Two two from White to Omley. In play, looking at the runner, and it looks like Texas will get the most important out. The tag applied to Trevisio. And the tag over at third. The back runner is going to be called out there. <laughs> Trevisio got all the way back there and say she got there safe, which then you had the back runner and Jackson standing there. And then the only reason you have to do this as a catcher or anyone in this position, if he's going to say safe, which he didn't even make that call, you absolutely need to tag that back runner at that point. Jackson should have left the bag to go back. And at that point, she's out. And yeah, you see the Texas dugout and you could hear the Texas fans screaming for it to apply the tag. So Texas gets a second out, but runners on third and second. And that's up by White once again, right? Showing off uh, her defense in the circle, knowing exactly what to do. That runner was halfway down the line. A lot of times pitchers specifically just take a peek there, even if they're, you know, a few feet off the bag and go one, and that would have been an easy run. So kudos to her in getting that ball off to Bree Cantu at third. Morgan win the batter at the plate. Singleton walked. Ball getting behind Smith. But recovering in time, will throw to second. This goes out into center field, but the awareness of Rhodes out there backing up at second and the arm being respected by Trevisia over at third to not try to take. Yeah, that's a good move right there not to go home. Would have been a dead out. J.J. Smith, no business throwing a the ball there. Luckily, doesn't come back to get Texas. A lot going on on the base pads here. <laughs> last couple sequences. 3-0 pitch. Will be ball four. So then walks. Yeah, bring up Ashlyn Anderson. Mentioned it was Anderson that had hit that sharp liner right back. Two white hitter in that collarbone area. Bases will be loaded once again for Kansas. They try to cut into this three-run Texas lead. 
I think for Coach White, probably a little bit frustrated watching his pitchers come out day three, right? This should be the time you know exactly what these hitters do. You've seen them for two games straight. And so far, both Courtney Day, even White coming in here, not as sharp as we've seen them over the past week or so. And I think for Texas, right, this is where you can't get complacent. You've got to keep keeping on. All gas, no brakes, you know what I mean? Especially if you're your hopes is postseason. Your hopes is getting deep into postseason. And for Coach White, he, he can't emphasize enough just trying to figure out that staff. What is the winning combo as far as starters, closers, relievers? Who wants to get that start? Who wants to get day one, day two start? Or game one, game three? Good start to this at bat for White Anderson popped out to short, grounded out to third, so it's been left side. The previous two at-bats. Travisio Omli win away on the bases. It's out to center, grab made by Rhodes. So Texas once again gets out of the jam and Kansas once again leaves the bases loaded. 6-3 ball game stays that way as Kansas leaves the bases loaded. Shannon Rhodes makes what was probably a more difficult play, look routine in center field for the out. Bottom of the fourth inning. Texas will start with the top of the order. Jefferson Rhodes Burke. All right, Megan, I have the answers. <laughs> I have a couple of friends that were aerospace engineering majors at Texas, one of which works for NASA. No big deal. Assuming that a football weighs 16 ounces, which is about a pound, from a 600-foot free fall in the helicopter, it would be traveling 134 miles an hour. You, I knew it would be hard. I knew it'd be faster. <laughs> it does fall faster from a higher distance every second in free fall. Calm the acceleration, 32.2 wow. feet per second, more than the second before. So, based on what I was saying in terms of Mahomes, who does have one of the stronger, if not strongest, arms in the league. Josh Allen would probably have a case. Gets that as well, throwing around 60. Be almost well, over double the speed coming from the helicopter. Now, what was that, 130? 134. Wow. Yeah, I bet you his arms are bruised. <laughs> Tweet him. I might. Show us your arms. Show us your forearms. Well, we would have to probably be a little more specific than that. <laughs> wonder if he got to wear like a chest protector. I didn't watch it, so now I'll have to go back and watch. Now you're curious. Yep. All of this to say, watch the NFL draft Thursday <laughs> on ESPN. Should be a very quarterback heavy draft first round. I think one thing saw last night as well, one thing that's been great to see, more fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. Saw in the UFC fight down in Florida. Packed house. Yeah. But there will be fans at the draft in Cleveland. See the fans out here at Red and Charlene McCombs Field. Saw some fans across the street yesterday. The orange and white scrimmage. And people are ready to go out. That first punch thrown, I feel like, in that UFC, the whole crowd just went up in a roar for like three minutes straight. <laughs> people ready to go. I know. I feel like sh the fans, even out here at Red and Charlene McCombs, more and more are starting to show up. What's the word on the street about college football, or at least here at Texas? Full capacity? Have they made an announcement? 
Nothing that I've seen officially. I know that NFL teams have talked about it, wanting full capacity in colleges. I'm sure it'll be discussed on a conference to conference basis, maybe sure. university to university, what the protocols are. Obviously still COVID concerns, but it's nice to see fans back out. That one blasted towards the wall roads. Talked about her in the open. Have a weekend, Shannon. No kidding. Second double of the day. Third on the weekend. Just absolutely seeing it. And I like the fact, okay, I know we want to see the home run every single time. But both her and Mary Iacopo, I feel like you're just watching these batters get better. They are so strong on that inside pitch, but both of them have gotten so much better that middle out, and they're staying on it, not trying to pull it. And what a time to start seeing the ball, huh? Yeah, Rhodes, the double in the first, the double in the fourth. Showed you the home run yesterday, having quite the weekend. Shannon Rhodes just four doubles entering the weekend, three on the weekend, <laughs> three this weekend alone. Well, usually if she's going in those gaps, it's leaving the yeah. yard. <laughs> Burke having quite the day as well, quite the weekend as well. The RBI single, two RBI double. Reed thus far, Want nothing to do with it. it was 3-0 before that strike. This is what Coach White wanted out of Lauren Burke, and we've seen it. You know it's there. She is so consistent this weekend. This pitch inside, she's able to drive it and keep it fair. I feel like you had nowhere else to throw her. She was hitting doubles high and out. She kept, I feel like, staying away, away, away. They finally go inside with her, and she shows that she has no problem turning on it as well. Texas has scored 25 runs thus far this weekend. Eight of those coming off the bat of Lauren Burke. Iacopo will take strike one. Oh for two, not an even 400 for the year. Flew out to center last time up. Grounded out to short first time. Had a home run midweek against Texas State. She continues potentially with Rhodes. You could have two players breaking the single season. Home run record. Reed's throwing two different change-ups right now. She's got that straight change, and then that last pitch we just saw, just taking a little bit more off of it. That's why you're getting Texas batters, a few of them guessing a little bit. That's why we've seen a couple backwards Ks as well. Mixes that with that backdoor curve to the righties. One, two, taking foul.
Taylor Hoagland in 2012 hit 18 home runs. That's a home run every 9.9 .9 at bats. Iacopo coming into this weekend had averaged a home run in every 7.8. That's that backdoor curve that just didn't come back over. And as you saw, trying to get that timing, not even able to get out of the way, that one just clunked her right in the knee. That was a solid thud. See, Texas batters, ow. <laughs> just wear it. I don't know how. Just walk that off. See Caitlin Washington coming in for a pinch hit for Colleen Sullivan. We saw this yesterday, she would come in a couple times for Mary Iacopo, and you're just watching Coach Wright really trying to get her as many looks as possible, wanting her to get back on track. She's an excellent pitch hitter situation for Texas. I think at this point, if you're not seeing Taylor Ellsworth, it's going to be between Ellsworth and Caitlin Washington getting that first pinch hit. So a couple of personnel changes. Camille Corona coming in as well to pinch run for Iacopo. We can rest that knee a little bit. Hope she's okay. So Kay Wash, 300 on the year. 71st at bat, she has 21 hits. Almost had 22 there, but just foul. I like that about Kawash. This is the second time she comes in. First pitch she sees, she's swinging. So you got to love it out of a pinch hitter. Ready to swing at the first pitch. It just sets a tone, right? Coming off the bench. I'm ready right from the get go. See the career doubles. One more to make 48 to tie Jody Reeves, who did it from 97 to 2000. Back up the middle, Reed will field it herself. One out over at third is Burke down, but safe is Washington, so Texas will still have two on, but two down. Yeah, and that's that off speed again from Reed. Haley Reed doing such a nice job with that pitch. Caitlin Washington, after swinging first pitch, nearly squeezing it down the line. She got back to back change. Mackenzie Parker. Proud steward, I'm sure, of Bo, recipient of the home run ball souvenir. Black, looks like a lab, right? Paying attention. Come on, your mom's up. Give him a holler. Oh. <laughs> Good start to the at bat for Reed ahead 0 2. This one hard hit out to left field, bounces off the wall. One run will come in in Corona. So Texas builds on that lead, making it five. Great job by McKenzie Parker. After going yard, she pulls one right field. They're gonna stay away, away, away. This is that backdoor curve. It's a little up in the zone, but Parker right on time, stays with it, driving it to left field. Credited with the double. Seventh double of the season. Went on the ground to third. Anderson with the long throw executes. Texas though adds two more. They lead 8-3 as we head to the fifth. One in the first, five in the second, two in the fourth, Kansas had their opportunities. They capitalized in the second, but left runners on base in the fourth, as it is a five-run advantage for Texas. Game number three, 
Series decided yesterday, Texas took the double header, so Longhorns going for the sweep. Looking to move to nine and three in Big 12 conference play, chasing both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Already three games they have played against Oklahoma. Three losses in Norman, but a three game set on tap for next weekend. Tyler Denning, Megan Willis here with you today. Is Kansas really this story? Today, the same as what we saw yesterday, opportunities for the Jayhawks. Mind you, doing this without one of their best hitters. But leaving runners on has been what's hurt them. Texas, to their credit as well, has had a response and capitalized on their opportunities as well. Yeah, I think you, you just can't go without mentioning the Sydney Ramsey injury last weekend versus Texas Tech. It was game one. It was a steal. It was a non-contact situation, but for whatever reason, Cleet gets stuck, and she goes ahead, and I think she te tears both ACL and MCL in her left knee, so unfortunately out for the season. And as you mentioned, one of their best hitters, she's a team leader. Coach McFalls just mentioned you know, she felt like that was a, a big reason, probably why they did drop a couple games up in Lubbock. Just this team, right? It's a big blow. How do you get over it? But I'd have to say, just with the eye test, watching Haley Harper, who came in in shortstop, has done a great job for Kansas. She's made some incredible plays over the weekend. And then the bounce back against Wichita State, a number 23 Wichita State, they were able to get that W. So, again... This is a Kansas team still trying to find that identity. And when they're playing at all cylinders, Tyler, I feel like you're seeing them get it done. They, we've seen some spectacular defense. They've got the speed. They're putting up the power numbers, 50 home runs on this season. It's just the consistency. And how do you get the consistency out of the circle, right? They have a couple huge wins. You see that there against Oklahoma State, Missouri, Wichita State. So they have the capability of getting those big W's, and it came from really great starts out of the circle. Unfortunately, for Haley Reed, Casey Hamilton, and Tatum Goff, all three of those pitchers got W's in each of those games. They just haven't been able to connect it this weekend versus Texas. Yeah, Sydney, if you're out there watching, we wish you a good, well, as quick as possible, look forward to you back out but for coach mcfall's third season at kansas in 2019 they go 15 and 36 2020 13 and 13 before the season cut short and then this season currently sitting at 22 and 19 so getting progressively better every single year they have been able to put some balls in hornbuckle out at second though tries to stretch it Texas getting the out. What a play out there. This is a well hit ball up in the zone. That's that rise ball that was so well yesterday for White. Hornbuckle getting nearly all of it, trying to stretch that into a double, but a perfect throw into second base. Great tag by Parker. So get the, the out. Single for Hornbuckle, but then the 9-6 put out with the throw from Camille Corona to McKenzie Parker. One more look at the throw again. And Camille Corona with an absolute laser. I mean, that is a long throw and right on the money. Tough, too, to play the ball off the bounce on the wall. Mm-hmm. Then, unfortunately, right to follow that up, but you see uh, Riley White, first pitch, just nails Shelby in the foot. And so, again, this is a little different. I think Coach White's going to make a change here, too, because you just don't see a sharp White like we saw yesterday. So after Gayer is hurt, a pinch runner comes in in Lyric Moore, and Texas will have a new pitcher. It looks like Molly Jacobson. Talk about her when we come back.
So pitching change for Texas. Molly Jacobson will come in, the senior from Iowa, 12 and three on the season. 63 and a third innings pitch, but Megan, based on what you saw yesterday, just under that 50 pitch threshold, we weren't sure as to why she gets pulled out of the game. What do you need to see today from Molly? Yeah, right now she's got to go right at these batters. Way too many free passes have been issued from both teams, uh, but right now just focusing on Texas pitching staff, go right at, right? Until Kansas proves that they are going to attack you consistently, you cannot keep issuing three passes. Yeah, she threw 48 pitches, two and a thirds innings, two hits, one run. It was earned, a walk and two strikeouts. You can see 11 batters that she faced. There's the line for White. And you know, I, I think you watched Riley White. You'd have to go back, have to ask Kurt here, when's the last time? But you see her holding her arm. And remember, we showed you she got hit yesterday by a line drive. So curious if that's a little stiff. And then also curious, you know, when's the last time she's pitched back-to-back -back days as well, right? So I understand wanting to get her out there, wanting to get looks, um, but at what, what cost? So Jacobson in to handle a first and third situation with Hirsch. In scoring position, pinch runner Lyric Moore over at first base to Taryn Trevisio, the batter. One of those walks, as you referenced, that was her first at bat in the second, and then a single. Back in the fourth, one, two. As far as Jacobson, right? She went into the third inning. That's when they put Riley White in. She had a couple Ks. She gave up two hits, one walk, but I didn't feel like she was completely off. I, you know, that was something we just weren't able to get down with Coach White after the game to understand, you know, what the quick pull was. Must not be injury as she's out here today. Three, two pitch, fouled off. All four. So all three base runners now on via free pass. Walk to Hirsch. The hit batter in Gayer that put more on. Her spot and Trevisio now. Nine hole coming up. But it will be a pinch hitter. Sophia Buzzard. And Tyler, right now, I just have to imagine Coach White is just got to be fuming at this point. Seven walks in this game by the entire staff already. Just. It's unacceptable, right? You do just unacceptable. You can't you can't have that and a hit by pitch, not with a team where you're trying to buy for going pretty deep in postseason play. Just way too many extra free, free passes, and you almost wonder: Are did you look past this team already? What's you know? It's game three. You should be wanting to continue to put that pressure on. Those are freshmen hitting 167 on the year. 429 though with runners in scoring position. 333 on the season with the bases loaded. Buzzard who came in yesterday, she's the one who ripped that line drive right off of Riley White's shoulder.
Three, two, one down, three runners on. Kansas, four for 25 with runners in scoring position. 25 runners that they have left on base. They are three on right now as they trail by five here in the fifth. Will that change? Yes, it will. Blooped in. One scores the throw cut off by Burke. Second one in and Lyric Moore. Eight to five. Great job by Buzzard coming in, the pinch hitter. Felt like she was right on Molly Jacobson. She was taking all the balls. Goes deep into a full count. She gets one, she can hammer to left field. Huge for the Jayhawks. Huge as well, they find that clutch hit. Tighten up the ball game and flip things back to the top of the order. 313. 13, 15 for seven. For Kansas, number 13, Haley Harper Rios. Jackson will get her fourth at bat of the game. Harper will re enter. Peyton Renzi will come on as a pinch runner as well at second for Vicio. Kansas with an opportunity now. Tying run at the plate, just one out. With that change, it, it did kind of look like Jackson attempted, but they're going to say she pulled back. A swing and a miss. Bouncing foul. Shea O'Leary up in the bullpen. You're going to see a short leash again with those two runs, letting Kansas back into this game. Again, still not seeing if Molly Jacobson has settled in yet either. So you definitely want to make sure you have someone else up in the bullpen ready to go. Smith liked the pitch. Just outside for ball two. Jackson puts it in play, out to right. Corona cannot make the grab. So Kansas trying to score two more. They do get one. Smith trying to run down. But out over at third. Well, they called it was safe. a call safe, excuse me. Yeah, thought initially Fist was up. But Jackson delivering for Kansas, a two-run ball game now, three in this frame. This ball all over the heart of the plate. She does a great job sitting back. It's a change-up, and she drives it to center field. Feel like right here, <laughs> you had quite a bit of base runners. Jackson almost holding up. And again, lucking out is Kansas. This buzzard almost getting herself out at third. Two on and potential to tie up this ball game. McFalls waves the runner home, and Kansas has exploded here in the fifth. Well, we kept talking about how they needed the timely hitting. They needed to step up. They had left 25 batters on, runners on over the weekend, and just 
big time by both Brittany Jackson and Macy Omley stepping up here. Again, this ball curve away. It's just up in the zone. Molly Jacobson not living down at the knees, and that's going to be a change. Here comes Shea O'Leary. But man, Kansas, what a great job after the last two games as well. Just sticking with it, knowing they're in the game and getting the five runs here in the fifth to tie it up. Yeah, had gotten the breakthrough hit in the second, but have exploded for five here in the fifth. Just one out. So Shea O'Leary will come in for Texas. 1.99 ERA in her 91 and two thirds inning pitch. But Megan, Texas on this weekend, they've issued 18 free passes. And you go back to the start of this inning, Hirsch got the walk. Then there was a single from Hornbuckle, but they get her out at second. That the lone out sitting on the board, but then a hit batter and another walk issued. Texas has struggled with Free passes. Yeah, I mean, 18 free passes on the weekend. This is this is definitely something Coach White's going to go back to the drawing board with next week. But right now, Shea O'Leary needing to come in and throw strikes. There's no secret here. She throw strikes and then also keep them down, right? Molly Jacobson, unfortunately, she started throwing the strikes. They just left them up in the zone and over the plate. Yeah, that's when the hits started to come. The two RBI double from Buzzard, the double that scored a run from Jackson, and then Omley, the two RBI single, but advancing to second, which is where she stands now in scoring position. Opportunity for Kansas to take the lead in this contest here in the top of the fifth inning. Nine hits for the Jayhawks, eight for the Longhorns. The count two and two. That's a good pitch right there. She goes with the off speed. I say a little up in the zone. Three two pitch. We play to left field. Washington makes the grab out number two. Much needed out for Rivers Texas. Defensively and O'Leary coming in. Anderson 0 for 3 on the day, hitting out of the four hole. First 16, the runners in scoring position. Runners left on, you had referenced 25. That is so many. Think about the runs that could be scored, but Kansas already five here. Can they get some more to take the lead? Strike from O'Leary makes it 2-1. Three one pitch. Out to right field, Corona will make the catch, so Texas gets out of the inning, but 
Kansas explodes to the tune of five runs. 8-8 eight, eight ball game, 8-9-1 due up for Texas. Fifth inning for the Kansas Jayhawks had left 25 on base prior, but Megan, the bats came alive. Kansas wants it. Yeah, with the bases loaded, Buzzard came up with that two RBI single, and then it's top of the lineup. Brittany Jackson getting it done with an RBI herself, and Macy Omley stepping up again, getting her fourth RBI. And look at that reaction. This is huge for Kansas. They're down five runs, and this team battles back after all week and leaving runners on before that inning, 25 runners left on base and man they finally capitalized we've been talking about it who's going to get the big hit who's going to step up a little timely hitting a little bit of luck but right there they were all over texas's pitchers they were doing a great job laying off any of the balls texas allowing way too many free passes and kansas finally capitalized we can two will lead off the inning for texas story of this has been punch counter punch Kansas scores three in the second. Texas responds with the five. They had the two more in the fourth, but Kansas has wrestled the momentum onto their side of the ball field. How about what Haley Reed has done since she's came in? Yeah, I think she has done a phenomenal job in the fact that she's been able to come in and slow down the bats a little bit. Yeah, she did come in and give up you know, the three runs last inning, but I like the way she's been using that off speed. I feel like she's throwing at about three different speeds and doing what Kansas needs. Cantu pops it up, but Gayer, the catcher, able to make the grab. Cantu trying to get a sneaky bun, unfortunately gets underneath it, pops it right up. Was hitting in Day's position. Eight in the lineup, so now J.J. Smith, nine hole hitter, try to turn things around. Reached via air. Scored a run back in the second. Struck out looking in the third. Texas right now, J.J. Smith needing to be extremely patient right now. Make sure if she is swinging, it's something in the zone because it'd be great for Texas to get a rally started. She gets herself on. Two takes on two close pitches. And I think that's actually a good take for her, a little bit off the plate. It's a great pitch. See that backdoor curve? You know, I think if she does swing, more than likely off the end of the bat, so a good take. 3-2 pitch, back in play, up the middle, tough throw for the second baseman, Hornbuckle will not be in time. As I was saying, just to get to the top of the lineup, Janae Jefferson, they're really needing right here with the runner on, Janae hitless in the game, she has been walked. See Reed going away, J.J. Smith again. Excellent effort by Hornbuckle. That walk you mentioned for Jefferson came in the second inning. Her other two at bats, ground outs. Yeah. Drop it down, but the ball trickles foul. As you saw, JJ Smith picking up. If that ball would have stayed, no one was ready to cover third. Nice heads up base running. 
better defense letting that ball go foul though. So reset, do it again. Jefferson awaits the 2-1 pitch. And now 2-2. Chop foul, nice grab over in the dugout. Excuse me, bullpen. Back up the middle, we'll shoot through the gap. Smith over to second. Jefferson on. Driving that one right back up the middle. I feel like they've been going away, away, away to her. Fouling them off and finally able to barrel one up. Career hits, 247 chasing Bridget Washington. More than likely, probably gonna see her surpass that next weekend. Yeah, Jefferson came in and Looked like a senior as a freshman and has always looked the part. Completely capable, such a fun player to watch. As is Shannon Rhodes. Back to yesterday in the home run swing. Yeah, this is in game one. This ball's absolutely demolished. Her third at bat. Two RBI home run, just showing off power. Her 15th of the season. Austin Fire Department posted up out in that space. Saw they had a hook net, it looked like. Try to grab a ball out of the air. We'll see if Rhodes can send one that way. Or does Reed get the best of the great bat for Texas? I don't know, but that last pitch sure looks good. That looked like that was one that she might want back, that backdoor curve. I kind of stayed up in the zone there. See so your home runs by year. By far her best season. Nearly doubling that total from 19 where she hit eight. Side, the last two pitches, two takes. Count three and one. Reed ready to go with two on to Rhodes, who turns on it, but just a little early off the netting foul. to short, lead runner down over at third in Smith. 
Second out, big out for Kansas as well, protecting this tie ball game. I'd say that's a huge out, and you know, just thinking, maybe didn't want anything to do with her, but you put her on what to get to Lauren Burke, who has four RBI on the day. She's three for three. Doesn't get any easier. That's a huge out. Eight runs batted in on the weekend for Burke. Just puts the bat out and weakly hits that ball. So Reed able to get out of it. 8-8. Eight, eight. Things stand as we head to the sixth inning. Let's flash it back. Mention April 30th, 2016, the last time that Kansas beat the Texas Longhorns. Kansas jumped to an early 1-0 lead. Chaley Brickley started the contest with a leadoff solar home run off of Kristen Clark. This one ended in five. Kansas winning 9-1. Last time, Kansas victorious. As Texas has Controlled this series, Kansas losing the last 11 meetings between these two programs. Yeah, and in that win, McFalls was in the coaching staff here at Texas during that win. Conversation between Texas head coach Mike White and the trio of umpires. You see the scorecard out, so I have to imagine there's been quite a bit of changes going on. Quite a bit. Not sure what would be going on here. I'm a pen scorekeeper too, so. <laughs> Texas leads this series all time, 40 wins to 16 losses. Showed you the last 11. All time here in Austin, Texas, 18 and six. They've won the last six. We we'll have some baseball coming your way Tuesday against Incarnate Word. Third ranked Texas Longhorn, 630. Presented by Tiff Streets here on Longhorn Network. Streaming live on the ESPN app. And wow, boy is baseball on a tear. Third ranked in the country, tied for first in the Big 12 with a record of 12 and two, 16 straight wins. They've won their last 10 series. Ty Madden with a 1.68 ERA leads the Big 12. And Zach Zuby had the last six games. And for 19, two home runs and 10 runs batted in. Check them out in action Tuesday, live here on LHN. And actually, they are losing right now to Oklahoma State, five to one. Texas still down here. It looks like the rule books come out again. I have to imagine, I mean, you go back to the way this lineup was written out. Really, most of us don't even get to see the actual lineup card. Today we did, I, I, but I, I just don't see any other changes that have been made. One thing I could question is maybe the Brie Cantu situation over at third. Yeah, Megan, I think this is a first for us. I have never seen the umpire crew having to get out the official rule book, laminated and all that they are looking, and obviously these umpires pretty well versed in the game, but if they are tricked and you up here and we are, as soon as we get some clarification, we'll let you guys at home know, obviously. But. In our however many years we've been up here calling games still Trying to figure out the DP and substitution rules, re-entry. This has everything to do with Texas players again. As Hirsch is coming up to bat and she hasn't been taken out of the game. And here we go. It looks like 
pitching wise, Texas is going to have Courtney Day re entering. So Che O'Leary will sit down for Texas. Day will be given the opportunity to warm up. We will get clarification, give it to you when we come back. So still getting clarification as to what the specifics were, but Courtney Day will be back in the pitching circle for Texas, having already thrown 67 pitches earlier in the contest. And at this rate, I'd have to imagine Courtney Day was not in the bullpen, so she is coming off at least three innings of just, you know, pretty cold here. So those warm-up pitches, probably the first pitches she's seen since coming back in this game and I can only speculate at this point here Tyler I have a pretty good idea how this got here I think when we saw Brie Cantu because remember Brie Cantu started on the lineup card it she was in the 10 spot right she was the flex she's at third so she wasn't hitting well last inning when she went in to hit in Courtney Day's spot I believe that's when they burned O'Leary because O'Leary went in as that pitcher well, Day comes in and looks impressive. It's her third strikeout of the day, but a good way to start the inning off, especially based on what we've seen in the circle thus far for Texas. Good start. Yeah, I'd say so, right? As I was just mentioning, she's been on the bench the last three innings. So to come in at this point, though, Tyler, right? What do you got to lose? You got to go right at these batters, and that looked like a nice break to her curveball. Cheyenne Hornbuckle, one for three. We've had it all in this game, Megan, and anything we haven't seen yet. <laughs> From the base running. Re-entry rules. And what's an 8-8 contest. Good pitch from Day. Yeah, good looking change up. So Day starts the sixth off. And Probably not anticipating having to come back in, obviously, but back-to-back -back strikeouts. Well, in a, an inning that started very slow, a lot of confusion. Hats off to Courtney Day coming back in here. And, and you know, it's not just Day, right? I mean, Kansas hitters had to sit in there and you kind of just kill the momentum for sure. And Kansas had all of it after getting those five runs and then coming back and keeping Texas from scoring. Single in the second for Gayer, a strikeout looking in the third and hit by the pitch in the fifth. Yo, Tay gets a strike. Base hit bounces over the head of Cantu at third. So a two out single for Shelby Gayer. Get the eraser out, Megan. No kidding. <laughs> Coach double-checking his lineup that he got all the changes that were made. 
because at this point, right, for Kansas, there were quite a bit of <laughs> pinch runners that came in last inning as well. For Kansas, number seven, Karen Pagliasso is the game and is batting for so you heard the seven for 15. It was Renzi that came in to pinch run for Treviso, but she will come back in. Treviso, that is to hit. Hey, that change up's looking really good this inning. up and she strikes out three. One single from Gayer. Courtney Day getting it done with the curveball. She's keeping them off speed with that change up and just coming right in with that rise ball as well. Courtney Day, all three outs by the K. Even in the score, 8-8, eight, eight, even in the hits, 10-10 between number 12, Texas, and Kansas. Texas going for the series sweep. Kansas looking to make it a successful trip in terms of snagging one. Mary Iacopo will lead off the bottom of the sixth inning in a game where we have seen nearly everything. The rule book was gotten out by Texas coach Mike White. Icopo over two, hit by a pitch, last time up. That one nearly clipped her as well. Yeah, the pitch before even closer. So you can see here that Reed's trying to go inside, jam her up. Icopo kind of giving her a look like, come on, man, you already hit me once. Three O does graze the corner. Inside again. Where you go here, back inside? Seems like that's what they're hammering. 3-2 pitch. Iacopo hammers this one out to center and that'll be gone. Finally got one to hit and took it out of the park. I think they were trying to go in, Tyler, and that one, the fifth pitch, way too good. All the ones before, I love the location. She was keeping it tight. That one, part of the plate, and Mary Iacopo gets her 13th home run. You see right there. I mean, that is middle, middle. And with a, ho a home run hitter like Mary Iacopo, she's going to make you pay. Breaks the tie to make it a 9-8 ball game. As mentioned, 13th home run on the season. Is it back to back? Indeed. Caitlin Washington in on the home run parade. For Caitlin Washington, you've watched her continue to get these opportunities this weekend. She loves that first pitch. And talk about being on time. This ball, again, up in the zone. Way too good. Timing, 
spot on. Caitlin Washington <laughs> goes yard. So and for Reed, who had had, seemed to settle into a pretty good groove against these Texas hitters, but only a matter of time, especially with Iacopo, Washington, back-to-back -back solo home runs. Looks as if she will sit down. Fourth time this season, Texas has gone back-to-back. -back. You heard the music, party up in here. Texas leading by two. So it's a tie ball game, 8-8. Eight, eight. Mary Iacopo isn't even done congratulating all of her teammates before they have another one to congratulate. <laughs> Love that react right there. Yeah, no time your own celebration and you know they love to see it there's nothing better than watching you know your your teammates that aren't getting the starts and you know they have it see the success and just man i love that shot right there 88 home runs for the team back in 2010 that's what this group is chasing parker had one earlier today that won't be a home run but it'll bounce in fair territory mckenzie parker on with a double Mackenzie Parker again, first pitch she sees, just like earlier with her home run, you love it. First pitch for Tatum, Goff too, not a bad pitch, it's a curve away. Parker just stays right on it and able to sneak it right inside that fair line. Down left field. Now Jordan Whitaker. Goff the new pitcher in the circle for Kansas. Making these bats, picking up the pitchers in the circle. Texas, it has felt like at times, sometimes the, the life going down, the energy a little bit. We saw the players in between on the inning switch out of the dugout, interacting with the crowd. And then mm -hmm. Iacopo, that long at bat, every pitch, it felt like inside, inside, the 3 2 pitch. She's able to take out for her 13th. Texas has cracked this tie to the tune of a two-run advantage right now, but runner in scoring position with Parker, no outs. Tatum Goff, sophomore from Rusk, Texas, 4.01 ERA, has thrown 68 innings, 45 strikeouts to 21 walks. Two swing and a miss, so Goff gets Whitaker for the first out. Hey, bro, that's correct, right? Had mentioned yesterday, Megan, as well, something interesting. Traditionally, you would see Texas in between these conference series with a midweek non-conference matchup, but Texas will not have a game prior to hosting Oklahoma State starting Friday here in Austin. I think this is going to be a nice week for Texas to not have that midweek game after, especially after a game like today. You're saying they're going to practice a little bit. <laughs> I'm assuming. I think a little bit of that. I think you're going to want a, a nice, maybe a day. Well, you're going to have Monday off for sure, both these teams. But a game like this, it's long. You there's not many softball games that go two and a half, nearly three hours within seven innings. It's pretty mentally exhausting. Take me through that as Courtney Day's the batter, but for student athlete, as you yourself once were, how does that week break down? Well, usually you get that Monday off, right? It's a recovery day. You're getting massage. You may go get ice bath Tuesday. You're probably going to get a light little workout in. 
Stay in foul territory. There was a play to be made potentially for win, but could not spot the ball. Continue. As you see here, again, another sun ball. I'm not sure. Yeah, she didn't make contact, but I think she thought that one was way out. I mean, that stayed in by three feet. That would have been a nice out for Goff. 2-2 two, two on the ground is short, and Harper throw picked by Wynn over at first, so does get the out there. All right, so so far so good. You have me, uh, I'm signing up. Monday yes. you said <laughs> off day, along with the massage. I'm good there, but I yeah. think that the work is gonna increase. Yep, and, I, and not a whole lot of morning work, I think at this point, you're gonna either get a nice little workout in at the field, uh, you know, kind of to just flush the legs out, and then I bet you that a hit around is what starts, a nice e easy hit around. Pitchers getting a bullpen. <laughs> And then I have to imagine some serious uh, video and going back and looking at uh, a little bit over the weekend with Kansas, what you could have done better at, but then really focusing on Oklahoma State, their pitchers, what to anticipate for as hitters. But they're gonna practice every day for sure. It's just not gonna necessarily be a heavy two, three hour practice each day. How much of your, your week is dedicated to your opponent and that scout and how much of it probably just shoring up your own issues and the things you want to work on. Yeah, you know what, Tyler? I'd have to say that the scouting has gotten so much greater since when I played uh, in college and all the technology that you have. And I mean, you add in this new facility Texas has here, they have an entire video room. Right, we just had a locker room that we watched on TV, you know, some Don't VHS. say VHS tapes, oh my VHS gosh. VHS tapes, right? And, <laughs> or you have the camera out there with the wires connecting and, you know, it's not like what you have here. Here you've got the Yacker Tech, you've got videos that are just stationed everywhere here at Texas. I mean, in most facilities have it. Three, so one. the scouting is just huge, and you're gonna you have assistants that are on staff that are just in charge of video to cut video. Uh, it, it's intense, and that's why you're watching our game just get so much stronger. Yeah, back in the day, probably you're talking about when you counted on your opponent, and there was an exchange of video. We'll send you ours. You send us yours. But with the proliferation of digital technology and the ability to see nearly every game on TV or streaming. Back to the top of the order after the walk to Smith. Jefferson trying to build on this lead. Texas will have to get three outs and protect whatever it is that they leave on the scoreboard. As we head to the top of the seventh. All right, I'm totally cool with the, <laughs> the day off on Monday and the massage. Maybe no ice bath. Yeah, <laughs> same. I loved it. I, I was like, oh, pitchers? You know, pitchers always got the massage. And then finally, I remember the day I was like, oh, catchers too? This is awesome. <laughs> I'm taking advantage of this. For Kansas, it'll be interesting. They're in the midst of a two-week road trip by virtue of playing down here in Austin, choosing to stay on the road as their next series will be in Waco. So a two-week Texas swing. Jefferson popped up. Harper at short, grabs it. Well, Texas tapping into the emotion. Their 20th multi-home run game of the year. Aya Copo, 243 feet. Washington, 220. Texas leads by two. Kansas to back when we come back. So Kansas down to their final three outs, needing two runs or more here in the seventh inning. It's been an interesting one. Tyler Denning, Megan Willis closing out this Big 12 Conference Series. Longhorns looking to move to nine and three on the season in Big 12 play. 35 and six on the season if they can protect this. It was Che O'Leary who we had expected to see in the circle last inning, but Courtney Day comes in. Strikes out three. 
did allow one hit in there. But Kansas, 9-1-2, due up. They found the timely hits. It's just that Texas has had a response, the punch, counter punch, nature of this game. On the ground to short, Parker with the throw, Burke with the grab, one down. And that's what you need out of Texas, getting that lead off out right from the get-go. I feel like Texas not able to get that first out other than one other time. I think it was back in the third inning was the only time they got the lead off run, uh, batter out. Yeah, that's something Kansas has done good really? all three games. So Jackson, who's really been a bright spot, Over the course of the weekend. Contact, but foul. <laughs> Strike to move the count to two and two. Courtney Day, you go back to last inning, having to go in. Again, what we assume is because Shea O'Leary was burned when they put in Brigant too to hit. And I just can't get over the fact that you know Day was not in the bullpen getting warm. I just had the warm up pitches. He comes out and throws three strikeouts, but a single there to Jackson. So time run at the plate. Macy Omley, as we look at the hitting from Jackson. Jackson, again, just proving why she's been so strong as a leadoff batter here for Kansas. Continuing to put herself on and giving her team opportunities. Single, a double, four runs batted in. Two of those in the second, two in the fifth for Omley. Back up the middle, Jefferson with the snare and gets the out on the flip. Wow. I mean, we were still trying to figure out, I think if Jefferson actually gloved this ball, the speed that she's able to not only just get to this ball, but then also give a nice toss to Parker. Good thing Parker was there. That was incredible. And all credit to Jefferson. She makes things like that look so easy. We had seen something like that yesterday where she was unable to flip it over. But wow, what a play for out number two, Texas one. Out away from a series sweep.
swing and a miss. Texas out of here with a 10-8 victory and a series sweep against Kansas. Megan, your thoughts? My thoughts is that this showed resilience out of the Texas offense. This was not a pretty game by Texas, but they found a way to win. Tyler, they had 13 hits. The offense, as we know, they've been so good. But the fact that they were able to go with those back-to-back -back home runs back in the sixth to put them on top, I'd say that's uh, as resilient as you can get for a squad. Third Big 12 sweep of the season. You mentioned those 13 hits, three of those home runs.